Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We're going to take a look at creating a panoramic photo today. Now, there's lots of ways to accomplish this, and it's one of my favorite subjects, so we've done a couple of tutorials in the past. Today, we're going to take a look at just the straightforward, how do we do it in Photoshop. If you want to learn more about actually using the camera, you can check out the blog at rastervector.com for some tips on shooting with your camera. But the whole process is fairly straightforward. What you're basically going to do is take several pictures and then stitch them together using photo merge technology inside of Photoshop. To do this, you need a little bit of overlap between each of the photos. So if you're taking these handheld and you've got your camera, make sure your camera is actually at portrait aspect ratio. And then you're going to turn at your body, making sure that you have about 10 to 15 percent overlap between each picture. When you do that, it works great. In the case of this picture here, I was able to stitch together seven photos to show this much larger scene without having to step back. I could still preserve the details and create a nice high resolution print from multiple images. Let me go forward here. Here's another photo combined with several images in a courtyard. We were able to capture a lot of live action. Here's a much bigger image comprised of about 12 photos stitched together. And it really helps take in the idea of how big the scene is. And you get the idea of how these pictures work. Now, the cool thing is not just that we can create panoramic photos like that, but you could even go a step further, creating interactive panoramic photos like you see here, which allow you to actually zoom in on parts. There's the wife and kids. We can actually pan over here and see people shopping in the market. And it's a full 360 degree picture that allows us to pan around and look at the contents of what was happening in that scene. The person can look down and could actually pan and look up. They could zoom in or out. And it's really a cool, immersive experience. You'll find some of my panoramic photos posted at my personal website at redpixel.com if you'd like to take a look. Now, this works really cool, but how do we do it? There's really two parts to making this work. You do all the work in Photoshop, and then you use another tool that's for multimedia authoring, like VRWorks or QuickTime VR Studio from Apple. Lots of different solutions out there. You'll find no shortage of panoramic software that'll do the multimedia side. But let's do what Photoshop does best and create a panoramic photo. I'm going to go ahead and choose File, Browse, in Bridge to fire up Adobe Bridge. Bridge is a companion program that ships with Photoshop. This makes it really easy to take a look at those panoramic photos and see the overlap, make sure you got the right pictures. You see here we have six photos comprised to make a wider picture. If I shift click to select all of those, you could even see how they work together. And here's the overlap. This little bump at this edge of the picture is this part of the photo here. This rise in the peak is this part right here. And the way this was done was actually using a tripod and using a specialized tripod head with the degree increments marked out. I just turned the camera 15 degrees for each exposure. This would mean 24 pictures would make a full 360 degree panoramic photo. Let's go ahead and fire this up here. I've got this basic six image here and I'll choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. Now this goes ahead, fires open the Photo Merge dialog box and in this case we could choose to use Auto to pull these all together. I'll tell it to blend the images together and just click OK. And Photoshop will open up each picture and then attempt to align them and actually bend the photos to create that panoramic image. The cool thing about Photo Merge is it's very intelligent. It looks for the overlap in the images, automatically picks up on it, stitches the photos together, and gently blends them using layer masks to get rid of differences in exposure or anything like that that may make a distracting edge. And you see it's done. It's done a great job of taking those six pictures and combining them together, gently picking up on the edges and making a nice panoramic photo. Now, you'll often with a panoramic like this need to crop it or clone in some of the areas, but you see that took hardly any work whatsoever. Let's go ahead and close that and go to a much complex image. I'm going to jump out here and take a look at this photo for Zader. And in here I have 24 exposures. There we go. And you see we have overlap between each picture. Now this one I shot fairly meticulously. And what was important here was I was on manual exposure with the camera. 
I set the exposure of the camera for the brightest area in the scene so I wouldn't overexpose and then I shot the scene. Photoshop can compensate for a lot of that, but you want to try to cut down on big exposure changes that could be caused by being in an auto exposure type mode. Now with all of this said, with all of this care given, I've also done lazy panoramic photos where I simply planted my legs and turned at the waist and actually shot multiple exposures that Photoshop stitches together just fine. The extra care you put in makes a better image, but Photoshop is very forgiving of lazy photography. Now I've got these all selected. Let's go ahead and choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. And for this case, I'm going to take advantage of a newer model here for Spherical, which is going to work for a full 360 type image. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and tell those to blend together and click OK. Now, a 24 image panoramic will take a little bit of time to process. This is a good time to get a cup of coffee, do something else. Now, don't leave the podcast. We're going to go ahead and condense this time. But realize, unless you're working on the fastest computer, a high resolution image like this may take a few minutes to process. Now, once all the pictures have merged together, you'll have a multi-layer document with lots of masks. You see here that if we click on an individual layer, it's done a great job of using masks to sort of blend the edges. Now, don't be bothered by these little lines you might see here. If you zoom in and take a look, you'll see that those aren't actually there. Now, this distortion and bending that's going on in the photo is great. It's actually what we wanted to have happen here for this type of cylindrical image. Now, I've made an action that you can use that will actually automate this and make the left edge and right edge line up. The idea here with the panoramic image is you want this edge to be perfectly seamed with this edge. So you see here we have half a tree. Well, over here we have almost the whole tree. And what really should be happening is right about here the images should be lined up. I've made an action that you can download from the website rastervector.com that fixes this. Let's go ahead and call up our Actions palette, Window, Actions, and I'll just tear that off. And we'll load that action up. I'll go ahead and click Load Action and navigate to it. I've already downloaded it to my desktop. There it is. And this will make a seamless loop. I'll go ahead and press Play, and what it basically does is merges all the layers together and then creates an overlap using the Auto Align command to create a seamless blend between the two edges. Okay, that looks good. It says crop or clone as needed. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit, Command minus. And if we look at that, you'll see that the left and right edge actually do line up with that building. We could test this really quick by choosing Filter, Other, Offset. And by moving this here, we can actually offset that image and take a look. Right here is where that seam would have occurred. So as we move that through, you'll see that is indeed a seamless photo from left to right edge. Now, that worked great. What we would now do is save that out and then take it into our panoramic photo application and stitch it together. Now, this particular panorama has a really big curve to it. That's because in that photo merge box, we actually used the option specifically designed. If you wanted a more traditional panoramic image that had a straighter edge, when you choose photo merge, go with the automatic option or something more like perspective as opposed to spherical, which we did to create a curved image. Lots to panoramic photos. The great news is, is that Photoshop CS4 and even earlier versions of Photoshop make this process fairly straightforward. My name is Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com. And while you're there, check out some of the books we've written over in the book section. Thanks again.